What I see a lot of people do is as they start to come down, they start to lengthen their right arm perhaps a bit too soon, lengthen their right wrist perhaps a bit too soon. And now as I just rotate my body through, you can now see that that club is pushed further away than it once started. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing the dreaded shank, where we hit it out of this piece of the golf club. It feels horrible, it's so destructive. And a lot of people think that it's a disease, they can't get over it. it it's contagious and actually, in most cases, it is technical. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my three main reasons to why I see the shank. So let's get into it. So for me, there are three main reasons to why the shank occurs. And some of these I don't actually think have been mentioned that many times on these channels and I just wanna take you through them. Um, the first piece I'm gonna talk about is actually casting the golf club. So that is where, from a lever system, the arms are lengthening perhaps too soon, the wrist angles are lengthening perhaps a bit too soon, and how that can push the golf club away from you. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna line my club up with the edge of the mat and that you'll see a line down the edge of my club here. Now, if I go to the top of my swing and I start to move back, that moves the club away from that line, okay? So as I make a backswing, I'm moving that away from that line. Now, in an ideal scenario, we wanna come through and would like our club to line up again with that line so we hit it out of the middle of the bat. Whereas what I see a lot of people do is as they start to come down, they start to lengthen their right arm perhaps a bit too soon, lengthen their right wrist perhaps a bit too soon. And now as I just rotate my body through, you can now see that that club is pushed further away than it once started. So we would like to train ourselves to make sure that we don't release those angles too soon. Now it's important to understand that the angles do need to release just at different points. Now, the first thing I'd say is important to understand why you're unloading these angles. Sometimes it can be as simple as if the club face is open coming into the ball, one of the best squaring mechanisms or squaring the face would actually be to cast the right wrist. So from this angle, if my club face is open, actually casting my right wrist and flipping it may well be the best way for you to get the club face square. Now, obviously in an ideal scenario, we would wanna see the club face fixed and we'd like to think that that would stop or aid a lot of that casting motion, but um, that can be one of the reasons. It can also be as simple as just not understanding when these arms unload or how they unload. So for a lot of people that unload their arms, if I went to the top and got my elbow slightly out of position um, and then I started to lengthen my arms, you can also see the direction that that lengthens in. Of course, if my arms were placed slightly different as an angle, and I unlengthen that elbow, you can see now that the club travels in different positions. So the first thing would probably be to understand why you do it. But I'm gonna give you a couple of drills that will really help you understand how and when to unload that club. So I am up against my net here in the studio, but you can use a wall um, or something at home that is similar. And what I want you to do is just go into your address position, so make sure you have some wrist set address okay and you're going to maintain that and you can lift your arms up and you're going to try and stand against the wall like so okay now i would definitely recommend not doing this at speed but from here what you're going to do is you're going to swing to the top and you're going to work out how i can get the club to just strike that net again like a little matchstick um on the point that i've got it contacting here now for many people what you'll see is that's quite difficult and you'll start to actually lengthen your arms and perhaps hit the net quite early. And you would assume now that the club is going through and past the other side of that net, which is leading to a shank. Whereas just from here, figuring out how I can, I don't necessarily like these words, but figuring out how I can hold on to these angles a little bit longer and unload them at the right time to be able to strike that match if it was here. So again, figuring out how that feels. And I think for me, you'll soon realize that it feels like I've got my arms quite close to me. That's certainly what I'm feeling here. It feels like I've got my arms 
relatively close to my body. It feels like I'm keeping my right elbow right into my rib cage. I feel like my right wrist is held back. And then I actually let that go nearer to the golf ball because we do have to unload those pieces because it is a massive power source. The next drill to help with this is as simple as an alignment stick or an old golf club where you can just use the grip end. And what I would suggest is just lay the stick down right next to the golf ball, okay? Now I've got no problems in this being quite close to the ball. I would say that's almost against the toe of my golf club there. And the task here is to, of course, not hit that stick at all. Now, quite a simple one, but I want you to understand what you're trying to achieve here, okay? So for me, what I'm really trying to achieve is keeping my arms a little bit more flexed, I'm gonna say, my right wrist more bent back, okay? So if I go back, I've got my right wrist bent backwards, which pulls the club away from that stick right arm a bit more flex and you can see now that that's all closer to me and then I unload it at a later later period in this in the swing so for me here the goal is to understand how that right wrist is staying back and then lengthening at different points if you wanted to make this drill even more difficult I would recommend just using your right hand just using one hand only, because you will soon feel if I let that club go, you'll soon understand if I let that go. And actually it's quite difficult to, have to keep that right wrist bent back as I rotate. So again, the reason we're trying to keep this right wrist bent a little back, again, if you look at the line up the club here, as I hinge my, my right wrist back and turn, you can see that club is now more this side of that line. As I unload, that wrist too soon, you can see it pushes out in front of that line. So again, just tricking this up, you could think about holding some angle in your right wrist and rotating through and up lovely out the middle again and just hitting some very small shots like that would be really helpful too if you felt you was unloading your arms at the wrong point. Now, one of my next most common ones, again, that I don't necessarily see um, spoken about a lot is actually the body lowering um, into the backswing. So, for example, if I just set myself up here and I had someone in front of me and they wanted to have a chat with me and I just stood up to have a chat, you can see that as my body rises, the club gets drawn back in with me. And that counts in the opposite direction too. If my body starts to lower and I don't do anything with my hands or manipulate it in any way, you can now see that as my hands get lower to the ground, the club gets pushed out. So what I see a lot in backswings is where people's weights are slightly wrong at a dress or they're not in the correct place. They move into the backswing and their head starts to lower. They lose posture this way. They start to lower down as they turn. Their head goes more down and certainly more towards the ball side. For me, they have to work super hard at popping back out the shot to try and draw the handle back in. But if they don't and they go low and then stay there, you can now see that the club is now pushed out a little more than I would like. So again, understanding in your backswing why that tendency happens. Is my weight distribution okay between toes and heels? Once I'm in the middle there, in my backswing, do I actually turn and extend in the backswing or have that sensation? So some more considerations to have around that side too. Now the third and final one, I'm probably the most common in my opinion, which is the thrust. As we move into the downswing, my butt line moves forward. As my pelvis thrusts forward, we can assume that the arm plane thrusts forward along with the hands, along with the club head too. Now again, that can happen at different points in the golf swing. I've seen this happen as soon as the backswing where people start to thrust forward we definitely see it more in the downswing where this right hip, right heel kicks forward, the hand path kicks out, and we just really struggle to pull the head back in again. So for me, that is probably the most common one that I see. Now again, going back to why do we thrust? I think for me, thrust is more of a reaction um, than it is actually a cause. So for example, as golfers that have been playing a while, we tend to understand how the club needs to attack the golf ball. Um, even if you don't fully understand it subconsciously, you'll understand that we're trying to strike the mat in a certain way. And 
I often see players that get their club to vertical in the downswing, well, that's going to dig a hole. So their way to not dig a hole is sometimes to thrust in an effort to lay the shaft down, and then it's a lot easier to strike the mat in the right way. But again, you can see there that my club was pushed way out in front of me. So again, understanding certainly where the thrust comes from, but thrust is the third and final piece to why we see the shanks. Now again, some simple drills, if we was just gonna assume that it was backswing related, would be set yourself up against the wall, bum on the wall, club across the shoulders, and just learn how to turn your right, your right hip and right bum cheek into that wall as you make a backswing, okay? You certainly wanna understand where the balance points are. Again, for players that have their weight too far in the heels, it is quite common that they would rock forward into a balanced position back in the center of the feet. So there's a really good place to look there. But once I've got a nice balanced position, working up against that imaginary wall behind me would be probably one of the best ways to fix this. From there, again, understanding that I don't want you to just switch places. I don't want the, the wall to be up our bum. And then from there, we just switch hips. That's not what I'm looking for as well. And that's tends to be what I see when people want to work on this type of drill. They go to the top, their right hip or bum is on the wall, and then they just switch and get their left cheek on the wall. And that's not necessarily how we want to move. So you'll be able to see from that, if I just switch, we can see that this right knee and hip kicks forward, um, and we can see we haven't shifted at all. The best practice for this, in my opinion, is as you work to the top and you get your right bum cheek on the wall, you now want to put, keep this right bum cheek on the wall and push your left cheek back on the wall. And now you can see that both cheeks will be on the wall. I have gone back into a flex state. I have given myself some space for the club to travel into, and then we can start to fire that left hip out the way from there. So that is the way that I'd really work on that if that was something that you wanted to work on. So we have only just scratched the surface with where the shanks can come from, but these are probably the big three for me that a couple that people don't necessarily talk about enough, and the third one, which was definitely the most common one in my opinion. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.